Midterm elections are now only four weeks away. Incumbents finally back home campaigning full time. And we're seeing some evidence of the traditional October tightening in the polls. Pennsylvania Governor and former Democratic Party Chair Ed Rendell joins us now. Uh, and you've said that Democrats are, quote, finally getting a little backbone. Uh, what's the evidence of it? Well, first, the president himself is getting out there and, and hitting the issues that I think he needs to hit and doing it in a fairly aggressive and forceful way. I think the key to this election still is energizing Democratic voters and getting them to come out. In Pennsylvania, we have almost 1.2 million more registered Democrats than Republicans. If we can get our vote to the polls, Andrea, I think we win. And we've seen it recently trending that way. Dan Onorato, our wonderful governor candidate, went from being 15 points down 10 days ago to being four points down in a very good Franklin and Marshall poll released about four days ago. So the trend lines are, are, are good. Uh, I think Democrats are coming home and I think they're deciding that they've got to get out and vote. They may not be as wildly enthusiastic as the Tea Party, but the uh, tepid vote counts the same as a wildly enthusiastic vote. <laughs> well, look, staying in Pennsylvania, let's look at that Senate race, because among likely voters in the last poll that I saw, I guess it was a McClatchy Maris poll, it had a nine-point edge for Pat Toomey over Joe Sestak. Do you see any narrowing of that? A little bit. And certainly if you break it down and say among all voters, registered voters, it gets narrower. So our task is to convince those voters who say that they're not likely to vote now to vote. Uh, and I think uh, the president's helping in that uh, regard. Everybody's out there. I think people are starting to talk about it. I think, you know, on your show, I think you and I broke ground with the wacko and Fruit Loops comment. But I think <laughs> that's a gift that that's a gift that keeps on giving. I mean, you now have Republican and congressional candidates uh, talking about doing away with Social Security, not just privatizing some aspect of it or, or making that a voluntary program, but ending Social Security. And, and, you know, look, Social Security sure needs reform, but it's one of the greatest things that uh, government's ever done for people, and it's a godsend for older Americans, and nobody in their right mind should want to get rid of it. So I think our voters, uh, uh, particularly in southeast Pennsylvania, where we've gotten a lot of the Christine O'Donnell flack. Uh, our voters are starting to say, hey, do we really want these guys running the government? Maybe our guys haven't been perfect, but do we really want these guys running the government? Well, uh, Governor Rendell, now, you told Al Hunt over the weekend on Bloomberg that you would like to be chief of staff. Is that because you think <laughs> you're the only one who has the vocabulary and the, uh, the plain spoken uh, tradition to compete with Rahm Emanuel's tradition over there? No, I actually uh, was sort of joking, Andrea. I, I said that's the only government job I would take, and that is true. But but I don't think I'm a very good candidate for chief of staff. As I said in the next breath, Tal Hunt, if I were president, I don't think I'd want Ed Rendell to be my chief of staff either. You know, for chief of staff, you want someone who's not going to make news necessarily, who's going to toe the line, uh, who's going to get things done. And I think there are aspects of the job that I would do very, very well, but there are aspects of the job. <laughs> I wouldn't do so hot at uh, It's also Andrea, a little so. fact of what happened back in Pennsylvania in 2008 when you were fighting against, in the primary, against Barack Obama. Uh, presidents tend well, to reach I, out I to their own intimates. I think that that's not a problem. I mean, look, Barack picked Hillary Clinton to be his most important cabinet officer. And Hillary and Barack have developed a great relationship. And Hillary's been a loyal soldier. And if I went down to Washington, and it's not going to happen, but if I did, I would do my best to contain my normal Ed Rendell tendencies. And that would make me probably a pretty boring <laughs> chief of staff. We don't want you but, to change. But no, <laughs> well, sure, sure. But, but no, seriously. Seriously, Peter Rouse is a good choice. He's smart, and I was almost bowled over by the terrific comments he got from Republican legislators as well. So I think he's a fine choice. <laughs> I uh, really one do. Quick, one quick question: part of the, the Democratic, well, part of the Democratic firewall against a Republican takeover of the Senate is West Virginia. And what's going on with your good buddy Joe Manchin, the the governor there, who is really facing a, a tough fight now? 
Well, it, it, it's it's really the strangest thing because unlike a lot of our governors, myself included, whose pop favorable ratings have gone down with the economy, Joe's favorable ratings were terrific he, he, right before he announced for uh, senator, and now all of a sudden he's in a, in, a, in a tough battle. But I believe Joe Manchin will prevail, a Andrea. He's up against, obviously, a self-funder, and that's always hard, particularly because Joe hasn't had a lot of time to raise money. But Joe will win out. I mean, he's been a terrific governor. He's a West Virginian through and through. He's a populist in a state that populism resounds in. I think any other year than this, Joe would win by 20 points. This year, he's probably going to win by four or five. But, but it, it's tough out there. It's tough for everybody. It's tough for Republican incumbents.